Hello everybody and welcome back to Analog Vernacular. Today we're going to be playing some more Tactics Ogre Reborn and uh, I think we're starting Chapter 4. I don't actually know for sure, but let's get into it. Yep, we're starting Chapter 4. The Buckram reeled as rumor after rumor flooded in, following the fall of Vidoc Castle. The leader of their enemy, a youth scarce old enough to shave, their owner Buna Branton, a man unworthy of their trust. Dark Knights routed. But above all else, the news that King Dorgalua's daughter still lived. In their desperation, the people wept. They yearned for a righteous leader, a savior to bring them prosperity. The Lady Kashua was the answer to their prayers. Lancelot Tartaros, mouthpiece of the Holy Lodician Empire, recognized Kashua as the rightful heir to the Valerian throne. The quarrel over succession was officially laid to rest. By Lancelot's accounting, this prior unrest, as he named it, stemmed not from a deep-rooted divide between clans, but instead from the misdeeds of a handful of power-hungry men. The history books would speak of no great Valerian war. Yet only the landed and the nobility paid any service to Lancelot's tale. For those who resented the ascendancy of the Buckram, words made a poor sound. While the lie of the battlefield had changed, the war raged on. What had once been seen as a clash of clans became a rift between rulers and the ruled. A struggle to break free from the yoke of oppression. You still live. Leave us. Can you hear that, Knight of Zenobia? <laughs> it is only a matter of time before you fall. Who rules in Valeria is a trifling matter. You of all people must understand this. <sighs> Let me guess. Unable to stem the tide that rises from the hamlets and villages? Perhaps we ask too much of the Bakram soldiers. They're not the soldiers we are, you know. Or the men. Always binding people to your will. Bettering them lest they show signs of free thought. Perhaps therein lies your problem. They ask for a stern hand to rule them. Uh, they ask? You're mad. You have it wrong. It is the world that is mad. Tell me, how many of these peasants would even lift a hand to better their lot were they given a chance? How many would bloody their hands? risk their necks, walk without leaning upon another. How many would dare to fight? <sighs> Think back to your own uprising. Where were the people for whom you shed blood? Safe at their hearths, grousing that more was not done for them. Times were hard. It was all they could do to keep themselves fed. Nonsense. They chose to be victims. They think that only from without the castle walls may one voice discontent. Not realizing that the quickest way to the throne is a knife to the king's ribs. These people have the right to live out their own lives, not fill some part in a play of your design. You have both your eyes, and yet you see less clearly than I do. True freedom is not granted from above, it is won from below. And yet the commons look without for a savior, even as they claim sovereignty over their own fate. They wait, and they wait for their savior, never taking that first step towards saving themselves. Man is not so slothful a creature as that. They merely lack our strength. You are much too pure of heart, holy knight. The people have no need of dreams. 
We give them all they need. And what is that, pray tell? A strong, unwavering ruler. You are mad. All men are born with a terrible burden upon their hearts. This insatiable yearning for pleasure. They do not hesitate to take the lives of others if it will better their own. And yet, even these base creatures can know guilt. So, what do they do? They turn it around. This is not my fault, man says. The world has failed me. Someone must bring order to this chaos. If the commons want to pursue their pleasure, let them do it in our service, under our rule. You call this rule? This trampling underfoot of all who disagree with you? We trample no one. All we do is reach beneath the separating flesh of this world and wrench out the source of its ailment. No. As the body strives to mend itself, so does the heart. These people you so despise may one day astonish you with their valor. You have far too much faith in the creature called Man Knight. People are drawn to power, drawn towards safety. They will betray even their most beloved to obtain it. Kashua, come. Kashua, what are you doing here? Allow me to introduce to you your liege, knight. For this girl is none other than the gift left us by Dynast King Dogalua, the Princess Versalia, rightful ruler of Valeria. <laughs> what? Well, as you say, the Bakram are not long for this world. But with the princess in our hands, Valeria will beg to serve under Lotus. Kashua, how? Is this true? I love Denham. As my brother, I loved him. But he was no brother to me. He abandoned me. And now, I him. Kashua! Though it pains me to part with the man who took my eye, I see no need to further torment the vanquished. Farewell. <coughs> Wait! Farewell, Knight of Zenobia. Yeah, Lancelot gets done dirty in this game. Damn. The princess has not been seen since the ceremony. Not even the officers among the Bakram know her whereabouts, and the regent has lent his spies to the search. I see no other explanation but that the princess has sided with the Dark Knights. Then the rift between Branton and Tartaros widens. What word of the Dark Knights? Most remain garrisoned in Heim, but many of their commanders, including Tartaros, are conspicuously absent. Perhaps this is why the Bakram do not move against us. What could they be scheming? You asked me to search for the Holy Knight of Zenobia. Yes. Have you heard something? A confession wrung from a scullery maid. It seems that the Holy Knight languishes in the dungeon below Haim Castle. So he lives? Yes. But under such a guard that not even the Bakram are allowed near. I was unable to mark him with my own eyes. Still, you have done much. Go. Rest. By your leave, Commander. Kashua. Commander, should we not move our forces on Heim? Not as yet. It would be rash indeed to strike without first knowing the Dark Knight's purpose. Yes, but the more time that passes before we strike, the weaker we become. Have you forgotten the way the men speak of the princess? Soldiers in your own ranks weep aloud at the thought of lifting a sword against Orgalua's blood. I know, I know. All the more reason to not act in haste. A report, sir. What is it? The soldiers at Brigantis have taken hostages and holed up inside the castle. What's this? What are their demands? Our surrender to the Bakram, sir. After all the fighting we've been through, 
Not bloody like. So the Order of Falaha joins the fray. Their followers among the soldiers were many, were they not? Aye. And their influence has only grown since the Princess's appearance. Not a situation we are like to change. My sis... The Princess's arrival was, for many, the advent of a savior. Add to this the fact that the late Dynast King was a fervent follower of Falaha. How natural for these new converts to rekindle his cry for accord and seek to abandon the fight. What will you do? I see no other choice but to meet with these followers of Falaha and speak with them. Out of the question! It's too dangerous, Commander! Not if I go alone and unarmed. They will hear me out. Okay. So, last time, we did not go unarmed, and we had to do the fight. But apparently, if you do go in unarmed, you don't have to do the fight. So, that's something to remember. Um, Alright, so, while we're here, we're in Chapter 4, so there's probably new things in here to look at. So, I can't remember if they're gold. I think the blue ones are the repeats that we've seen before. And then I think the gold ones are the new ones for um, this route. Pumpkin's Petal and Patch. Good news for collectors of trinkets and treasures. We have had the good fortune of running into a charming young shopkeeper named Pumpkin, who stocks all manner of rare curiosity. She peddles her wares, she travels the lands. So consider yourself blessed if you happen upon her. Now, I'm pretty sure we got that last time, but... A Rift in the Dark Nights. There have been rumors of discord between the Bakram and Dark Knights, and now it seems there is internal strife in the Dark Knights as well. A Bakram soldier revealed he saw Dark Knight commanders quarreling in Barnesia Castle. The details of the dispute are not known, but over the past weeks the Dark Knights have been linked to dishonorable acts, such as the massacre at Rhyme and the fall of Fidot Castle. The Dark Knights may be looking for a scapegoat on which to lay the blame, but thus far they have remained silent on the matter. Port Omish, Den of Thieves. Law and Order has suffered due to the lengthy war, but one town has been a haven for lawlessness since the rule of King Dragalua. Southwest of Quadriga Fortress lies Ubea, site of the outlaw's haven called Omish. Omish has a long history as a stopover port for sea traders, but over time it became a haunt for pirates, and it now operates under its own laws. It is also home to many criminals and former soldiers seeking anonymity, as well as refugees who lost their homes in Dragalua's Great War. Okay. Nothing new in there. And where are we at with the Chaos Frame? Okay, uh... Uh, Galgastan is a little bit closer to 50. That's actually good. Um, because that's what we're going to need later on in this playthrough. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, see where we end up. Yeah, I think we're good on that front. I was considering maybe getting a Damascus sword for Divold, but at the same time, I kind of like the Claymore having Breach, so... He can have Breach, and Gildas can have Stun. Yep, that's what we'll do. Since you're using a stun blade, we're not going to take paralysis blade in this case. Okay, so if we also look at the world tarot... Okay, so yeah, that's what I suspected. If you look down in the bottom left-hand corner, 
you notice that um, the neutral route and the chaos route do meet up here. So a lot of what we experience in chapter four here is going to be very, very similar um, to what we uh, did before. So. Not exactly the same, but it's going to be very similar. Okay. Okay. Yep, we remember this fight. Two dragons, huh? I've looked forward to our meeting, Denim of Goliath. You will pay for your crimes against Galgastan with your life! Okay, so we are still dealing with, um, some level scaling. I wasn't sure if we would on this one, since technically we have done this fight in basically its same state, but... This is going to take a beating this turn. Thank you. 
I hate healers! Oh, come on! Okay, that's a really good velocity shift. I mean, if we take him down, then this fight's over, so... Boom. Done. The bastards killed me. Sorry, Aram. We don't need to collect items, we don't need to collect experience, so there's not really much of a reason for us not to just down the guy. Alright, so this should be the fight that we should be able to go into unarmed, and we shouldn't have to fight. See if it works. As I told you, I've come only to speak with the leader of your order. I want no bloodshed, nor do I intend harm upon any of your followers. Such a cool little touch. Lies from the mouth of a murderer. Why come bearing arms if you truly want no bloodshed? I'm not bearing arms. I am true to my word, but if you attack, we will be forced to defend ourselves. We do not fear death, for the Great Father will receive our souls. But for those who abandon faith for the fist, only hell awaits. Bro, what? I 
I wonder if maybe it was the fight before this that I was supposed to do it? Hold on. <sighs> okay, this one would have been beginning of chapter four, I think. So if we needed to go back to that one, I think we can. Not a step farther. State your business. Only the faithful are permitted within. All right, the armor thing is actually kind of dumb, but whatever. So you got to take all your armor off too, which doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I guess in a way it kind of does, but like, if I'm unarmed, I'm, I'm unarmed. Armor isn't that weird. <laughs> don't you recognize me? I've come for an audience with your high priest. I don't much care for your tone. Steady there. That's Denim of Goliath you're talking to. What? I am unarmed. I mean no ill will. I'll be the judge of that. How do I know you don't have a half dozen soldiers with you? Leave off. Sir Denim isn't the sort to lie to us. Eh, I knew you were always their man. A grave insult. Enough! Sheath your swords! Our real girlfriend. People think I only have eyes for my sister, but no, it's all about Olivia right here. You too. Olivia's Denim's girl, no doubt. No doubt in my mind. I am Olivia, the Sybil of the Order here. You wish to meet with our leader, Abuna Pranset? Come this way. What did you say? Abuna Pranset? Yes. Your father is here. I don't understand. Please, we must hurry. There isn't much time. What do you mean? The great father Falaha calls him to his side. I'm sorry, Denim. What? When we discovered him in the Corpse Vale near Heim, he lacked even the strength to stand. What place is this Vale? It is a small cavern where those afflicted with incurable disease or plague are kept. Plague? We did all that we could to save him, but his condition only worsens. The Dark Knights had a hand in this, didn't they? He was tortured, yes. And we to quaff a vile draft meant to loosen the lips. And the mind. Father. Let us go. Father, it is I, Denim. Ah, Denim. You've come at last. There is something I must tell you. It's about my sister, isn't it? Kashua is not your sister. As you know, she is the last remnant of Dorgalua's line. The princess Versalia Oberith. Kashua's mother was one of the Queen's handmaidens. A girl named Mana Flora. You want to speak with me? What of? I was hoping, Your Highness, that, that I might be granted a short leave. I am dismayed. Do you not know you're the only one in this castle to whom I can confide my heart, Mana? The more your betrayal cuts to the quick. Did you think me blind? Oh, forgive me! I should have known that a king risen from the peasantry would prefer a simple country girl. Your forgiveness, I beg you. Forgive you? I might as soon strangle you, you... 
You will serve me for the rest of your days, Manaflora. Do you understand? My slave till you die. Wait. Surely you are not with child. She gave birth to Kashua not long after departing the castle. How is Manaflora? Ah, oh, I feared as much. The strain was too much for her delicate heart to bear. So, that is Vesalia. Is that to be her name? Vesalia? It was His Highness's wish to have his daughter named so. I heard it from his very lips. <sighs> we should tell him. You will want to know. Have you not heard? Queen Vernata will bear her own child a month hence. No. It is best that only you and I know of this. Then, what should I do with the child? Keep her. You lost a child recently. Kashua, was it? Raise this one in her stead. As my own flesh and blood? Yes, for her sake, and the good of Valeria. But how? I am sure you will find a way. Ah, I have something for you. Take these necklaces. They should fetch a good price. What? Where are these from? They were a gift from His Highness to celebrate the birth of his child. He intended that the blue be given to a prince, the red to a princess. But I could not sell these. You will need money if you're to raise a child, and a princess besides. You and I both grew up commons. You know what it is to need. What we must do. Give it no more thought, Prancet. This is the only way. But Branton deceived me. He used his knowledge of Manaflora and the girl to advance his position within the church. I heard Denham when the king passed away. Had I only offered up Kashua then, this war might never have come to pass. But I couldn't let her go. When I heard her call me father, I could not take that away from her, or her from me. I, I had no idea. The Dark Knights have searched long and hard for Kashua, but not to make her sovereign of Valyria. They pursue another purpose. Y you know this purpose? Yes. Her crowning ceremony was for show. They don't want her upon a throne. <laughs> they want King Dog Galloa's legacy. Wh what legacy? Some sort of artifact? I do not know what it is. Only that it rests with the king. Now that they have Kashua, they seek the tomb. And my sister knows where it is? No. She knows nothing. Yet her role is vital. Only one who shares the Dynast King's blood can undo the seal upon the tomb. They're using her. Yes. And when she has fulfilled her purpose, they'll... <laughs> Father, you must rest. Listen to me, Denim. You must save Kashua. You are the only one who can. You can lead her to her rightful destiny. Do this for us. 
for the <laughs> Father. Find Moreover. He was once Archiaris in our order. He can help you. Say no more, Father. You must conserve your strength. No, it is not about you. Become a stone along the path to our salvation. You must look with clear eyes, Denim. Make the right choice. Lead us along the true path. Make our way. Do this. Only this. You mustn't talk. You, you must rest. Denim. Forgive me. Father! Father. There is something else you must know. Can it not wait? No. It concerns you and the Regent Branton. Uh, what? He and your father were siblings. True brothers by blood. Branton's... my uncle? Then who am I? Your true name is Denim Morn. You are Barkrum. <laughs> That's madness! I won't believe it! Me? Bakram? Please, good sir. Calm. Think back. When you were quite young, you resided with Abuna Pranset in the royal city of Heim. Sybil! You lie! I wish it were so, but I speak true. As a child, you oft played on the grounds of Archiaris Maruva's villa. Stop this! Please! You spent your days in play with Maruva's four daughters there. Go on. You were closest to the girl who shared your birth year. One day, as you played by the water, this girl wandered too deep and began to drown. What? How do you know that? But... But that was my sister who was drowning. No. No, she, she saved me. I remember. In her struggling, the girl struck her head, leaving a small scar. It, it, it was you. It was my eldest sister, Saria, who fished us out. How is this possible? I am the daughter of Maruva, who was once Archiaris of Falaha. I... I cannot. You can. You must, Denim. You are who you were born to be. Uh, what? Now stand, Denim. What you are, who you are, has no bearing on who you will become. Find yourself a girl like her. Okay, we are dropping frames on my recording for some reason, so give me just one second. Okay, we're back. OBS is reset. No drop frames. I think I need to go through and uh, make sure all of my uh, stuff is updated. There might be some like firmware updates and shit that I need, I don't know. Okay. Anyways, let's Even go. Even were you born, Bakram, the ideals for which you strove would be no different. Surely you did not dream of a kingdom for one people only. Remember your father's words. Yes. It's as you say, it does not matter who I am, it matters only how I live, what I achieve. Thank you, Sybil Olivia. I am pleased. You are the denim I remember. Olivia! Saria! Sistina! How I rejoice to see you again! What are you doing in Brigantis? Where is father? I know not where father is. 
How is that possible? You were with him. He blamed himself for your departure from the Order. His days were spent locked in his quarters, though I believe his heart wandered elsewhere. When he did leave the castle on the night the Dark Knights attacked Rhyme, he never returned. Where might he have gone? I may know. The Hagia Banamuba. It is a place of worship to Ishtar, goddess of light. Father studied there in his youth. If he has left the Order, he has slipped from his faith. He would go there to find direction. I am sure of it. You may be right. Let us pray I am. We must go to the Hagia Banamuba at once, then. It's a mouthful, man. Wait, where's our sister Sherry? That's right. There were four of you, weren't there? Sister. Sherry has betrayed us. She's gone to Branton. What? That cannot be! I wonder if Sherry is recruitable in this route, too. I fear it is, Olivia. After leaving the Order, Sherry surrendered herself to the backroom. She serves as Branton's right hand now. Oh, my sister, my sister. Okay, Man of Peace. So that we must have gotten that title for coming in here peacefully. <laughs> That's fun. Okay, now we need to re-equip you, though. Maybe you should have those. Okay. You're back to normal. And where are we headed next? That's right, it's over here. The Hagia Bon Hamumba. Say that ten times fast. I dare ya. Okay, all that's optional stuff. Uh, we already have Azel Stand, so we probably won't be touching this unless we have to do it as a prerequisite for um, our other recruitment side quest. So, um, I think we're just about done with this episode. Before the next episode, I'm going to have to look up all of the steps to the recruitment that I want to do and make sure that I know when and how to make sure that that happens, because it's quite an involved side quest and it's not exactly um oh uh it's not exactly easy to you know understand like many of the side quests in this game um but yeah at any rate thank you all for being here don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you all in the next episode have a good one everybody I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patron supporters, Darren York, ZTD, Knife Namase, Kyle the Monarch, Andrew Smith, Chris Murphy, JW, Bracken, Quinless, Chris Smith, Vlado101, Kyle Schluter, and Jordan and Emily Hill. If you would also like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below.